for our NBA audience, we actually wanted to do a little draft of NBA comps for oh. players on both the Lynx and the Liberty. This is very Liberty skewed because I'm more a Liberty fan, but we have some great players from the Lynx as well. Now, the way this is going to go is if your player gets taken, obviously, in a draft, like you can't pick that person. Um, and then we're going to hopefully these give the audience a little taste of like, oh, this is like the player style for some of these mm -hmm. WNBA players that they may or may not have watched before. We'll see how the how the teams shake up. I'm not sure if we want to like pit these teams head to head in like a poll or anything like that, because we also want the player comps to be like accurate. <laughs> Yeah, I think so if you have like, like if you have Jokic and Kevin Garnett on your team, I feel like I'm going to be on the back foot there. <laughs> just until I say Corny Williams is like Michael Jordan. <laughs> right. You got it. Michael Jordan, Nicole Jokic and uh, Kevin Garnett on your team. Yeah. And I will be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're, we're going to start with you, Lucas. We're going to start with Courtney Vandersloot. Who's your player? Kind of easy. I will go Andre Miller. Um, oh, it's it might be a little easy when you think of like table setting floor general and obviously Sloot as like peak tire as like genuinely getting MVP votes, but the way they get into the lane without having these outlier athletic traits and their court mapping and understanding of where everybody is and how to use defenders momentum against them. It's like, how is this small guard who's not a great pull up shooter always in the paint? especially if you look at her, you know, throughout her career. So that that's how I get to uh, Andre Miller. So for Courtney Vandersloot, I went with a more recent comp mm -hmm. in Jose Alvarado. Oh, nice. Um, just another gamer gets a lot of like steals, both in the backcourt and in the in the half court as well. Um, sometimes can be a bit hesitant to shoot, but they, he comes onto the floor and the entire like tenor of the game can change, or maybe it's just when the Pelicans play the Nuggets. Yeah. And then for Sabrina, I'm going to go with CJ McCollum because of the three point shooting, the off the dribble game has a little bit more juice from the perimeter than like say athletic explosion at the rim, but also has evolved into more of a playmaking role as he is also yeah. tried to reclaim the glory of the combo guard at this stage in his career. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I like, I do want to go Jamal Murray. For okay, Sabrina. I was thinking about this one too. And I, I, you know, there are times where she looks like Steph, but you know, you can't just pull out Steph and, and things like that. Um, you got to reserve his <laughs> name. But if you imagine kind of the pull up mid range shooting for Jamal and his mid range counters, if you kind of move that back to the three point line, right? That. Or if you just imagine that they're floaters instead of step backs, honestly, the Sabrina comp really presents itself for all the reasons we talked about, where she, they both have these moments of true, like off ball excellence, you know? I actually think that um, Sabrina could uh, just improve her counters on the, on the inside of the arc. When yeah. she, you know, can't get all the way to the rim, doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have that like explosion, but she can uh, exploit defenses a little bit more by going to the step back that I've seen her use a few times over the last couple of weeks, including in big moments. So yeah, uh, I can see her kind of moving in that direction. So I, I approve of the comp. Definitely. And her best attribute as a driver is this really strong upper body. So, you know, shoulder into the defender, step back to create space. Yeah. Very yeah. viable path. And she likes to use she likes to use her. She does have a size advantage often on yeah. the, the smaller guards that that get put on her. So uh I like that. Ooh, mm -hmm. Sabrina with like a post game, that would be really fun, I think. I know. I, yeah. Teams do the opposite and like, oh, she's bad at defense. We'll like isolate her and post her up. It's like not like that's the one thing you can't do because she's really strong. With Stewie, I'll go. This is not an NBA comp, but for NBA fans who are going to watch a lot of him this year, I'll say Cooper Flag. I'll say Cooper I had Flag. a feeling you were going to go there when you brought him up earlier in the conversation. You know, Kevin Garnett is great. It's a little too easy for me. I just the motor, the psychotic competitiveness, the secondary rim protection, um, just being so elite. Probably you know, small ball five like the modern power forward um 
going to get a lot of buckets in that short mid-range area just by elevating over people. Uh, there are areas of the floor scoring. And, you know, NBA fans might not be as familiar with Cooper Flag, but I'm sure they will get to be this season and in the coming seasons. And so this, hopefully, Cooper looks like Stewie because that <laughs> right. is a high, you know, top 10 player in WNBA history. So we'll see if he lives up to it. But hey, that's, you know, you got to aim for the stars. As long as Cooper flag goes east, I'm fine. Mm. <laughs> fine over here. Um, okay, for Stewie, this one is actually courtesy of my fiance. He's watching her yesterday with, uh, he commented on the motor, like we mm. talked about and all of that. And even on offense, the areas of the floor that she attacks really reminded him of Pascal Siakam. Oh, uh, I like and it. I was like, oh, gosh, that's actually a perfect <laughs> comp. It's like if streaky shooters sometimes, but then like they just like on the interior, they're a force even when they don't have an, a real advantage. <laughs> they're just like kind of barely through. I think that she probably gets to the rim. Uh, I like her shot selection just a little bit more than Pascal's. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong about that. But yeah, I like I like Pascal. And when he want him, when you want him to be your defensive kind of anchor like he can do that too like happily he just like wants to constantly keep moving right before. um but Nigel was a little bit tougher for me because you don't really see her archetype of defender at her position that often like a lot of the best um like bigger defenders on the wing that aren't quite a power forward are like a like a Jaden McDaniels type um or I was even thinking of like Peyton Watson. I'm like, no, her foot speed is just better right. than those guys. Right. Like you said, she's not like ideal guarding down, but I think she would be better at guarding twos than those guys are. Okay. Like even though we're kind of hoping Peyton Watson can <laughs> guard some twos this year, if he can stop getting his um, feet twisted up with each other. So I actually wanted to go with Franz Wagner. Okay. I was worried. I I was like, how to, I was worried you were going to take mine, but okay. uh, I wonder, okay. I'm, I'm curious to hear yours now. Cause I had a couple for her. This is almost going to sound disrespectful to her and I don't mean it like this, but Andrew Wiggins. Oh, okay. Evolved from kind of this primary, the beginning of the careers are very different, but I just, you know, not a number one pick with the hype of Andrew Wiggins, but when she starts hooping, it's like primary usage made an all-star team on mostly box score volume. But man, when she is rolling on this Liberty team, it's I'm posting up mismatches. I'm shooting catch and shoot threes and I'm a dog on defense. And Wiggins, when he was locked in, like you would trust him on those two guards, especially yeah. in that Warriors playoff run. Yeah. And that's meant to be a compliment to her the way she probably had a more successful run as like an, an initiator of offense, but now scaled down as a complimentary player. It's like, man, secondary offense when we need it, catch and shoot three point, you know, shooting and can guard, can really use those physical tools to guard. Um, so I, I went with Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, I was thinking more of players uh, with like the right kind of motor because I don't think Wiggins is quite there. But when he is at his peak, right, I, I right. actually do like the comp uh, right. a lot for her because he does have that like it's like Jaden, Jaden or Peyton, but like they can they have like the better foot speed and then also the offensive initiation. No, it's a good one. Uh, I was actually thinking more in the vein of like, should I go more actual, just like much further scaled down three and D guys like Nikki Alexander Walker or Dennis Smith Jr. Um, but I like your, I like your Wiggins comp better. Oh, Nafisa Collier. Let me think about this one. Um, I like, I want, okay, I'll say it. I'll, I, Aaron Gordon, if you kind of translated the best parts of his Orlando offensive days to Denver, where this kind of four, maybe small ball five, incredible kind of, intersection of strength movement and like hand-eye coordination nafisa is like a 30 percent high 20s for a career three-point shooter but it feels like she makes every big one um and when the nuggets are rolling that's kind of how i feel about aaron gordon the main difference here is probably the 
passing. But even then, you know, mm. when Aaron Gordon was handling the point in that Minnesota, I think in game three or game four, when they won, he can do it. Like he can, he can slide into uh, primary usage um, for, for bits and, and pieces of a game. We're looking at, we're looking at some similar players here, actually, because I wrote OG and an OV if he could stay healthy and be more of a fulcrum. Yeah, and obviously a little more rim protection from yeah. the end. But generally I like I like where we're at. Yeah, I think uh I think OG probably the worst passer of the three. Um yeah. but maybe has a little bit more like I trust the mid range shot from him more than Aaron Gordon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, um, this is interesting because you have you have three at one time or another Denver Nuggets on your list. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and you have... You I don't zero. think I have any. What's, what's going on there? No, all of my my nuggets are unique players. They have no, they have no uh, comparison. This is because you know them more. Or, yeah, you know, more than I. Do. <laughs> I know that's, too much. Yeah, that's them. exactly. You're like no way. Like when Andrew Wiggins, when Aaron Gordon, you know, drives left, like and does this hyper right. specific <laughs> thing. He could never be if he's a colleague. All right, so our last player here is Courtney Williams. This is no disrespect to this player, even though. I disrespect this player on the regular, <laughs> uh -oh. but I had to go with Devin Booker. Okay. Um, I was actually between him and well, I'll, I'll, I'll see what you say. And then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it more, but I think just the mid range shooting alone, I think mean, Courtney is a much better playmaker than Devin Booker, but taking on that lead guard role and being comfortable scoring from, well, lots of different parts of the floor but really the same area of it and it's a shot that like everyone's like oh god that's going in isn't it yeah <laughs> shot. you just know it's cash this is purely an aesthetic comparison trey burke trey burke that hyper quick crossover screen usage pulling up from 18 to 20 more threes you know as they get later on in their careers absolute cash now for courtney williams it sets up what she's much better at than Trey Burke, which is the passing and the playmaking right. and getting into the lane. But just sort of this, they are undersized guards, but somehow they're still really long and wiry. Yeah. Um, and the change of direction stuff to get to that pull-up, uh, especially when Trey Burke was at Michigan, just beating the first level of defense often. So I will go, I'll go with Trey Burke. And I feel like they kind of have... I need to like watch Trey Burke, which I have not in a long time, uh, understandably, shoot. Because I, I feel like there's some similarities with the way they shoot the ball. But yeah, I will go Trey Burke. Um, this is funny. I kind of went the opposite of what you were worried about with KG and Michael Jordan. I'm starting, yeah. I'm starting Trey Burke and Andrew Williams and uh, somebody who's not well, even in the have, NBA. You yet. still have Cooper Flag and Jamal Murray. So I do. I think these are pretty... Like these teams are closer to to comparable actually because I got you know Pascal and Franz and I recreated the Raptors with Pascal and OG actually yeah. just realizing that but they have a little bit more shooting around them with like CJ and Booker yeah, so maybe they'd actually like make the playoffs. <laughs> uh, but thanks for helping our audience understand a bit more about these WNBA teams and these awesome players. I hope anybody listening to this podcast definitely checks out. Uh, the WNBA playoffs, I really anticipate they're going to be very interesting, especially with the series when you get to round two and on between yeah. the the teams that are at the top of the league right now, just really high level basketball um, from everyone there. Lucas, is there anything else that you want to plug for our audience? Any articles you're working on? Any projects that you want people to check out? Uh, not Nothing specific. I hope to have, not to, you know, knock on wood, but Aces Scout for round two, I hope to be really good because I, we've known this is a probable playoff matchup for a while, so I really want to dive into that. That's going to be coming out hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But other than that, just continued Liberty coverage uh, on my Twitter, on Nets Daily, where the Nets training camp starting up soon. And yeah, that'll be where all my stuff is. I'm doing some more work with the Nets themselves, Nets film focus type things where we look at players' games and, you know, kind of an X's and O's breakdown for a larger audience. So I got a lot of things coming and uh, yeah, I'm happy, really happy to have been on. Um, so yeah, thank you. Yeah. And we were really happy to have you. 
Um, you know, just having somebody who actually covers the teams in depth. Cause I, I'm really, especially with the WNBA, I have so much less like experience, even like deeply analyzing really any of these games. So I just wanted to make sure right. that our audience got, you know, the highest possible quality content in, uh, informative content on everything going on to really do it justice. Cause it is a league that is, you know, really starting to, to boom in popularity and, I think it's uh, awesome that that's the case, but you know, people need to, you know, have quality sources of information for yeah. their uh, WNBA analysis. Definitely. And if that Fever Sun matchup comes to light in round one, and the Fever have a real chance, I think of upsetting. Then it's really gonna. Then we get more Caitlin Cooper games and coverage, and that's gonna be. Um, yo, good you for said, the league. And, but you said Caitlin be, Cooper? Or sorry, Caitlin Clark. I always, Incredible. because Caitlin Cooper, great, oh, yeah, the whole thing. great John, writer who covers the Indiana Pacers. Only so someone I, with supreme ball knowledge would make that mistake. But that was, that was <laughs> that's awesome. Good. I'm that was, glad that that's the explanation. <laughs> that's a great Caitlin note to hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, awesome. All right. Okay. So for everyone listening, over half of you are not subscribed. So if you do like our content, please remember to subscribe. And then always remember that winning is fun and losing sucks.